A couple of weeks ago I made a video about my experiences switching to Bazai after being a long time Windows user. And in that video I basically talked about, you know, how much fun I was having playing games on my PC again. And I sort of had the idea to build my own PC with the sole purpose of running Bazai on it. Because my old pre-built was starting to show its age a bit. Even I mentioned in that video I put um, an RX 7 600 in it. And that card is decent but I really wanted something that could play games at 4K. So I returned the 7600 and I bought a um, RX 9070. And yeah, it's an incredible card. I did use AM4, which I know might be a little bit strange in 2025 to use AM4, but it's much cheaper. I am using my old SSD from my old pre-built. The only other upgrade I wanna do with this PC is putting a faster SSD in it and maybe upgrading the RAM if I start to struggle with 16 gigs but I've not had any issues so far and I mean it, it was an expensive build obviously but my PC is now much more powerful than even my PS5 Pro you know the, the 9070 I mean it costs almost as much as the PS5 Pro does I'm getting just incredible performance across the board I've been able to run games at 4k no issues some games I've used upscaling so Again, Cyberpunk, which was struggling on the 7600. It was it was difficult to get a solid frame rate. But on the 9070, I'm using like XESS, ultra quality mode, and it's like a locked 60 at 4K. And it's just, it's incredible. XESS, in my opinion, is kind of like almost indistinguishable from like native. It really looks quite good. FSR is a different issue, but I want to sort of circle it back to Bazai because I built this PC with the sole purpose of using Bazai and I have had a couple of issues in the last couple of weeks since my previous video and I do want to sort of talk about that but I also want to talk about the positives because there are way more positives than negatives but obviously when I made my previous video I'd only been using Bazai for a few days so some of these other issues just didn't rear their head didn't show didn't show themselves at the time but I will say that because of the way that Linux works, it's very easy to troubleshoot and find an answer. The thing about Bazai is that it's what I believe it's called an immutable distro, which means that the system files are locked down, basically like Windows or Mac OS. You can't accidentally delete the system folder or anything like that. So whilst you can make changes and you can do, you know, a lot of the things that you can on any Linux, on any Linux distro, it's still a bit more locked down. But I kind of like that because I like it feeling safe. I mentioned in my previous video that I was using Nabara and Nabara was not immutable and I kept on deleting my Nvidia drivers and just completely nuking my PC. But anyway, with the RX 9070, I had an issue right out the gate where the HDR wasn't working properly. And I had to basically change the color accuracy from prefer color accuracy to prefer efficiency because it was causing like all this flickering and, and all this crazy stuff but once i changed that i had no issues with the output or anything like that there is an issue with the way that linux handles hdmi output it's simply the fact that amd cards don't have hdmi 2.1 support on linux there's something to do with the HDMI 2.1 drivers being like closed source or something. So basically that just means that you can't really do 4K 120 with HDR VRR and also with 444 Chroma. So you have to use some kind of Chroma subsampling. I can still do 4K 120 HDR VRR, no problem, but it only outputs at 420 which is a form of subsampling, which causes some color banding. And it's especially noticeable in games when like you look up at the sky and say like at sunset, and there's obviously a lot of gradients across the sky. So at times, you know, it shows some banding. There is an option in the developer options called force composite, which I had to apply. And then doing that actually reduced the amount of color banding. So it's by no means unplayable. And I mean, how many times how often are you actually looking up at the sky when you're playing games, right? It is very difficult to notice a difference, but I mean, if I do want 444, I can just decrease the frame rate down to 60 FPS. If I do a 4K 60 output, I can still do VRR, I can still do HDR, but then I also get 444 output. 
Only 8-bit though. Now, if anyone's watching this and they have no idea what I'm talking about, I don't blame you. Most people are not going to notice this at all. And in fact, when I'm actually sitting down and playing a game, I don't really think about it. I don't think, oh my god, you know, there's this color banding is, is making this game unplayable. You know, it's not really an issue, especially with HDR on. It doesn't really, it's not very noticeable. But it is an issue and it's something that I think you need to think about if you're going to switch to Bazite. With the sole purpose of playing on a TV, just know that it only does HDMI 2.0 output. I think we just have to hope that HDMI 2.1 comes to AMD cards on Linux eventually. But yeah, I'm spending way too much time on this. It's really not a big deal. One of the most amazing things about running Bazite or any kind of SteamOS adjacent distro is that on the game mode, you have pretty much endless customization. So as long as you install Decilodo, which is really easy, you can just install it using the terminal. You can basically customize the home page exactly how you want it. If you download CSS Loader, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of themes that you can apply to the home screen. And this is like a huge win over like a PlayStation 5 where the PS4 had some cool themes that you had to like buy them obviously, but they had like cool sort of game related themes. There was a Spyro one that I remember where you know, the, the home screen music changed to like the Spyro theme and it had like all the icons were like different and stuff. But the PS5 has literally none of that. Like it's, it's completely locked down. There's no customization really at all. They did recently do that like 20 year state of play thing where you can change the sound effects and the sort of color grading to each PlayStation from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 4. And that's a really cool thing, but compared to what you can do on Bazite with CSS Loader, it completely blows it out of the water. And so I've kind of gone with a bit of a minimalist design with, with my home screen, but like the idea or the fact that I have the option to change it at any time is just amazing. And this is obviously kind of a love it or hate it kind of situation. I do love how easy and simple consoles are and I've talked about that in the past in previous videos but being able to go into the game settings and and fine-tune every single graphic setting to make it look how I want it to look as well as the ability to install mods on cyberpunk for example one of my biggest problems with cyberpunk is the fact that the HUD is completely static you have to like completely disable the HUD in that game or toggle on and off specific parts of it but there's no like dynamic HUD in it. One of the first mods I downloaded in Cyberpunk was a dynamic HUD and now it's just way more playable for me. It does, I do kind of drown in all of the options at times, like I've definitely noticed myself just wanting to sit down and play the game but I just can't help but think you know maybe I'll get a few extra frames if I turn this setting down or maybe I'll maybe it won't affect so much if I turn ray tracing on stuff like that but I have been really enjoying actually sitting down and playing games and one of the biggest reasons why I've gone back to using my PC is because my Steam library I have like almost a thousand games on my Steam library when I made that video a few months ago saying that you know I've abandoned PC I've gone back to console I also abandoned my entire PC library which is just massive and it just makes going back to those older games a bit more enjoyable for me I know that maybe that's a bit silly because at the end of the day it's about the gameplay not not how pretty the game looks but when I'm playing a game on my TV I want to use the full features of my TV and yes I know I did just talk about how it only does HDMI 2.0 but you know that's besides the point. Over the last week I've tested out quite a few games and I've had a pretty great experience with most of them but there's one game in particular that I'm really disappointed by and it's Indiana Jones in the Great Circle. Now this is a game that I put off playing for ages because 70 pounds for a game is really, I'm sort of struggling to justify that in my mind nowadays, but that's a topic for another day. But I managed to get this game on a discount on like Fanatical for like 39 quid. And I thought for that price, I think that's worth it. I think that's worth it. So, you know, I get this game key, I download it. It works fine for like the first couple of levels, which are really linear. But as soon as I got to the, first open-ended level with more exploration. There's just this massive slowdown that happens. Every time you load into a new area, or it's not even really loading, every time you traverse 
like every time you walk through a door for example the game goes down to like 20 fps for like two seconds and then spikes back up whereas otherwise the rest of the game is like unlocked 4k 60 on high settings my pc shouldn't have any problems running it so i, I sort of looked it up and it seems like it's just a bug with the current the, the current version of the game there's like some kind of issue with the way that mesa handles it and so I, it took hours of troubleshooting for me to try and figure out how I can change from Mesa to it's called AMD VLK but I just couldn't get it to work so I just couldn't play Indiana Jones I, I've had to put it down for now and it was a bit disappointing because I spent 40 quid on it and it's just not playable but that is like the one and only game that I've had problems with so far I played through Red Dead 2 no problems I've been playing Cyberpunk no problems I've just recently today actually I've just started playing Spider-Man Remastered and I'm getting native 4k everything maxed out like at like 90 fps and it's just insane it looks so good but yeah my my new rule kind of is I have to make sure that I really do my research now for newer games I'm just going to stick to Steam and if it doesn't work I can refund it on Steam you know but yeah apart, apart from that small disappointment I've had a really great experience on Bazite. I was able to overclock the RX 7600 uh, using a program called LACT and it worked really well. You can basically just do like anything. I had an issue, I also had an issue with like sleep mode where it just wouldn't, my PC just wouldn't go to sleep. Whenever I set it to standby mode like on, on the operating system, the fans just kept running and apparently that's a problem with gigabyte motherboards and Linux. You know, a little bit of research and I found a Reddit post which basically detailed how to change the launch parameter for Bazai to be able to communicate properly with the motherboard so that sleep mode just works now. And it's just cool little things like that, like you can basically tinker to your heart's content. Another small thing is that FSR 4 currently isn't available on Linux, but I imagine it will be added in the coming months, you know. I think that's just one of the things when you're buying any kind of new card. The 9070 is only a couple of months old, so it's going to take some time for the drivers to catch up and everything, especially on Linux. But yeah, everything does seem to be pretty much very similar to how it would operate on Windows. It's just that I no longer have to deal with Windows 11, <laughs> pretty much. And I'm able to just sit down on my sofa and play games rather than having to faff about with all of these different settings. So yeah, 95% of the time, Bazite just works and it's a great experience and I don't really have any complaints. On the, on the very small occasion that I've had issues, I've, for the most part, I've been able to fix it. I've been able to sort it out. I've been able to do some troubleshooting. And then like that one game, Indiana Jones, which is just bugged on Linux at the minute. And everything else that I've played has been a pretty amazing experience. And it's also the idea that, like, the fact that I built that PC, you know, I spent time building it. Obviously, I know that for some people that's that's why they buy a console, right? It's because you don't have to faff about with it. But knowing that I built this PC makes it more satisfying to play games on. I don't know why, it's just the way that my mind works. It's like the fact that I know that I accomplished building this and now I'm playing games on it just feels more fun to me. I don't know why. But yeah, I think Bazai will continue to get better, especially as SteamOS likely will launch at some point officially this year. I think that gaming on Linux is only gonna progressively get better and better and better. And I think that now is a really good time to jump in. If you're on the fence about it, you can dual boot Bazai. And it's a pretty seamless experience. It's very, very easy to install. I don't think that it's going to work specifically for everyone because I'm sure that there are other Linux distros that do productivity better, for example, but it's been a great experience and I don't want these negative aspects that I've talked about in this video to sort of play negatively towards the operating system because, you know, it, it has been just a great experience. But yeah, these are things that I think people need to know if they are considering switching, but I do recommend it. I've done a lot less troubleshooting on Bazite than I remember doing on Windows. Windows, I was troubleshooting some some problem, like every day it felt like. So I do really highly recommend Bazite, and I'm going to continue to use it. I'm I know that it's kind of the meta to do some distro hopping, but I'm pretty 
satisfied with Bazai unless something goes horribly wrong over the next few months. I'm pretty satisfied with it. And yeah, that's going to do it for today. I just wanted to sort of talk about... I sort of just wanted to go a bit more in depth. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found it informative. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.